In this lesson, we'll begin laying down the base colors for our character's shirt. Okay, so this is kind of where we ended up in the previous lesson. And, you know, we've, we've got the hair, we've got the skin. Now we're just going to work on kind of the articles of clothing she's wearing here. So uh, we've got her shirt we're going to tackle first. Let's go ahead and just kind of zoom in on that. Uh, I'm going to select my skin layer, hold on it to bring up my marking menu, and flick up to create a new layer. I'll just flick to the right on that new layer so we can rename this. We'll just call this something like shirt. There we go. So um, now for the shirt, we already kind of set the color palette up here with the little thing that's in her hair. So uh, that's kind of what we want to use. So um, coming in here just like we did before, let's experiment with some colors. And you'll notice that I've kind of cleared off the colors that we were kind of experimenting with on the sides. Oftentimes that, that'll build up and kind of become a distraction. So um, that's more of a pink. We're wanting more of a purple. So just kind of play with some of these until we find a color that we like. There we go. Let me go ahead and make that a little bit larger so I can see what that looks like when I drag it really quickly. Okay, I think this is probably the closest to what I'm looking for. So I'm going to come over here and I've got my large uh, extra broad nib selected here. So uh, you can see that we're using that. Now I may change the slant on that a little bit so that I can go with the curvature of her shirt. So uh, let me just kind of rotate that around. That should work okay. So I'm going to kind of start with her torso here. Let me shrink it down just a little bit. And I'm going to come in and now it's probably a good idea before I start coloring this, let me go ahead and bring in my shadows and highlights layer. So you can see kind of the planning out that I've done for the, the various uh, variations in color tones. So thinking about that, I know that these areas over here and here are going to be shadows. So I can come in and fairly safely um, color those in. I'm going to drop the opacity on that shadows and highlights layer. And we're going to come back over here and just start to kind of layer this in. Now I am kind of working my strokes with the curvature of her shirt. Um, probably not going to matter too much initially just for the simple fact that uh, we're going to be covering this up so much, but matter of fact I'm really honestly not even too concerned about staying in the lines at this point. And that should be fairly evident from what we've done so far. I'm going to change my slant a little bit here. a little bit more something right about there should work and we'll just kind of come in here just like so You'll notice that I'm kind of attacking the areas where I know that there's going to be shadows first, because uh, those are the areas that we're going to end up covering up here. You see, my dr I drug my marker because I was holding uh, my stylus a little bit uh, lightly, and it caused the marker to skip. So uh, just another little thing that you should be aware of. All right, great. I'm going to run that along the edge down below. All right, great. So we've got that covered. Now I'm going to come over here and let's maybe start with a highlight color that we can work with here. I think that that color is probably a little closer to what I'm going for in terms of highlights. So kind of come in here and just plan that out. Not to say we can't come back in and adjust this information later. But just like anything else that we're coloring on this uh, particular project, we're working from light to dark. So um, picking warmer colors for the highlights, uh, a little bit warmer than the purples that we're working with. Um, now, that's basic color theory if you don't understand uh, the temperature of colors. So um, thinking about the color I'm selecting now, it's more of a red. Red is closer on a color wheel to things like oranges and yellows, which are very warm colors, um, whereas the purples are closer to the blues. There's more blue in uh, purple so that 
It's going to be a little more of a cool color. There we go. Come down here and just hit this area. All right, fantastic. So um, we've kind of mapped out the shadows and the highlights here. Uh, so let's go ahead and just dive in and see if we can't get a little bit darker. Let's see kind of what that looks like. That's kind of a warm color. You can see that's very warm. That's not too far off from what we were using there. We could probably come in with that one. We were using these pretty, pretty lightly, so... I may even rotate my canvas a bit. Get a little bit better angle on that. Now, at this point I'm going to switch over to my medium broad nib and make sure that we are of adequate size with that. So I can come in and hit some of these areas in here. You can see that there are a number of different shadows that I penciled out on that shadows and highlights layer uh, that we have to work with as far as um, kind of roadmaps, if you will. I'm going to come over and grab my eraser. I'm starting to bleed out quite a bit here. But again, not too concerned with this. We'll end up probably erasing over these edges quite a few more times. And we'll swap back, holding that S key. Well, let's get a little darker here. I realize this is a little bit warmer of a color, but it's okay. We'll work with it. The, we can't go completely uh, cool colors in this shirt. Uh, we've got warm shadows over here as well. They're just a little bit cooler. And just kind of working this area where the shadow would collect under her chest. I may need to actually come back in here and raise the opacity on my shadows and highlights. It's getting a little hard to see what I've mapped out here. There we go. That's looking good. Now, after we're pretty confident in kind of the shadows that we've established, uh, we can always hide that uh, once we know that we've got a fairly solid base down. We can come in and hide that layer and, and get that out of our way. All right, great. So working our way along here, uh, we're going to have a little bit of an edge there, kind of uh, something we could always come in and use our colorless blender on. But I do have a highlight mapped out right there as well. So I want that to kind of softly roll around away from the camera. All right, fantastic. So we're looking pretty good at this point. Um, coming in, just kind of reinforcing, uh, mapping these different shadows out. Getting a little bit darker with each pass. Pressing a little harder, going over a few more times. Uh, just slowly building this information up. And coming in here, kind of hitting on this area right here. Don't want to blend into these highlights, or don't want to bleed into these highlights, rather, too much. Alright, fantastic. So, uh, 
again, a little bit of a repetitive process here, but uh, slowly but surely uh, should be your motto when you're working with markers. Um, if you're not sure about the colors uh, and, and you're making decisions that uh, maybe you're not as confident in as you'd like to be, then slowly but surely, just slowly build these colors up. Uh, and eventually, um, after layering color upon color, you're going to get to where you want to be. So um, we're going to just kind of gradually do that here. Just start building up this color here. Um, you can see our shadows are already getting rather dark. We can come in and actually hide that right there. And um, we're starting to darken up those areas of shadow, but the areas that are not defined as shadows are still really light. In fact, that's the color we've kind of decided is going to be the highlight color. So we're going to have to kind of bridge the gap between the values at some point. But um, in the next lesson, we'll just go ahead and pick up where we're leaving off here, and we'll continue working on our character's shirt.